This film supplements the e-learning lesson on the formulation and production of alcohol-based solution. It refers to the procedure followed by the Geneva University Hospitals, a WHO collaborating center, for the preparation and quality control of WHO alcohol-based solutions. By way of introduction, the one WHO formula and the components and values for the alcohol-based solution are shown on the screen. Documentation and traceability are important aspects of quality assurance and are part of good manufacturing practice. For this reason, you should fill in and sign the documentation relating to the preparation of the alcohol-based solution batch as you go. The relevant documentation is the prescription logbook, the production sheet. To comply with hygiene and safety rules during production, the operator should wear a clean, long-sleeved lab coat fastened up, not wear jewellery on the hands or wrists. A wedding ring is acceptable. Wash their hands. Tie back long hair and wear a hairnet. Have short nails, no false nails. When handling substances, the operator must also wear gloves and protective goggles. It is essential to work in an ordered, methodical and tidy way before, during and after production. Before starting to prepare the solution, check that the factory line is clear. Specifically, you should make sure that the workspace is clear of any unnecessary raw materials or equipment. Then, clean it carefully using alcohol. Set out the workspace with the necessary amounts of the ingredients for production and all the equipment and check that it's clean. If necessary, calibrate the container for the volume of 10 litres and make a mark on it. You should etch the mark onto the container to prevent it from being erased by alcohol or other substances. Check that the identity and quantities of the products are consistent with the production documents and check their expiry dates, also in relation to the period of use of the finished product. Write down the batch number and the compliance analysis number for all raw materials on the production sheet. Before you start measuring, a second member of staff should double check the identification of the substances. This check should be recorded on the production sheet. Measure 145 millilitres of glycerol 98% into the 250 millilitre measuring cylinder. To make it easier to measure into the cylinder, use a funnel or transfer it into a beaker first. 
Avoid allowing the viscous glycerol to run down the sides of the cylinder as much as possible. Take the volume reading by placing your eye level with the meniscus and reading off the value at the base of the meniscus. Measure 417 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide 3% into the 500 milliliter measuring cylinder. Take the reading for the hydrogen peroxide 3% in the same way as for the glycerol. Measure out 1,105 milliliters of distilled water. If distilled water is not available, boil the water for 15 to 20 minutes and allow it to cool at room temperature to between 15 and 25 degrees Celsius. To make it easier to measure into the beakers, first pour the alcohol into a bucket. If there is no certificate of analysis, always check the alcohol content of the ethanol using the alcohol meter before beginning to prepare the solution. If the alcohol content is less than 96%, calculate the new quantity of ethanol and distilled water. Measure out 8,333 milliliters of ethanol 96%. For safety reasons, all measurements should be checked by a second member of staff who then signs off on the measurements on the production sheets. Check that the stopcock on the container is properly closed, then start by pouring in the glycerol 98%. Next, rinse the cylinder used for the glycerol with a small amount of ethanol from the amount already measured out until no glycerol residue remains. Pour the measured quantity of hydrogen peroxide 3% into the final container. Add the measured quantity of cooled or distilled water. Incorporate the measured quantity of ethanol in three or four separate steps, mixing each time to homogenize it. Close the container by screwing the cap on as quickly as possible to prevent evaporation, then mix gently by shaking the canister for five minutes. Check the final volume and, if necessary, due to volume contraction of the water slash alcohol mixture, add water up to the marked level and mix again. Label the container with the name of the institution, the name of the product, the batch number, and the date of production. Perform quality control on the alcohol-based solution before placing in individual bottles. Check that the equipment used, the alcohol meter and the cylinder, is clean and dry. Ensure that the liquid is properly mixed before measuring. The alcohol meter should be at the same temperature as the liquid to be analyzed. For this purpose, it's best to place them both in the same room for a few hours before performing the measurement. 
pour the solution into a 1 litre cylinder. Carefully immerse the alcohol meter in the solution. If any air bubbles remain attached to the alcohol meter, either shake it gently to disperse them or lift it out of the liquid and immerse it again. Take the reading once the alcohol meter is balanced and floating freely without touching the sides of the cylinder. Take the temperature of the solution. If it is less than or more than 20 degrees Celsius, the concentration reading will need to be corrected. The limits of acceptability are plus minus 5% of the final concentration or 75 to 85% for ethanol. Record the result in the analysis report. This semi-quantitative test does not allow for accurate measurement of the H2O2 concentration in the solution. However, it can detect major hydrogen peroxide concentration errors over or under dosage. Prepare the necessary equipment and follow the FARMED procedure to perform the semi-quantitative determination of hydrogen peroxide. Dilute the alcohol-based solution at a ratio of one part solution to 10 parts distilled water. For each sample, take one milliliter of the alcohol-based solution and place it in a 10 milliliter volumetric flask. Adjust to the graduation mark with distilled water. Shake. Dip the test strip into the dilute solution for a second. Dry it off by shaking it for 1 to 2 seconds and then leave it for 45 seconds to work depending on the manufacturer's instructions. Note the colours that appear on the test strips to indicate the H2O2 concentrations by comparing them with the manufacturer's reference colours. Record the results in the analysis report. Check that the factory line is clear. Specifically, you should make sure that the workspace is clear of any equipment and clean it using alcohol. Get the individual bottles ready and check that they are clean. Fill in the production sheet for this stage. Distribute the solution into the bottles immediately. To do this, measure 100 milliliters of solution into a 100 milliliter measuring cylinder. Then transfer this amount into the individual bottle. Close the bottle immediately by screwing the cap on tightly. Repeat these steps until all of the solution prepared previously has been used up. Tidy up and then clean the workspace using alcohol. Check that the labeling table is clear of any other equipment or labels before starting. It's best to use self-adhesive labels or appropriate adhesive. Check that the label includes all the information. Specifically, the name of the institution, the name of the preparation, its components and concentration, the batch number and expiry date, instructions for use, precautions and warnings. Affix a label to each bottle so that the information can be easily read. 
Affix a label for the prepared batch to the production sheet. Write down the expected number of labels and the number actually used. Destroy any labels that were filled in but not used. This prevents them from being affixed to another product by mistake, reducing the potential for error. Once labelled, place the entire batch into quarantine for at least 72 hours. This ensures that any spores that may be present in the alcohol and on the surface of the bottles are destroyed. Identify the quarantined batch using an identification form. Place the quarantined batch in a separate, clearly identified area to prevent any risk of use before the batch is released. Clean the equipment used with liquid soap and water, then rinse well to prevent soap residues or marks. The production manager checks that the production sheet and analysis report have been completed and that they conform to requirements. The batch can be released and placed in storage after 72 hours in quarantine. File the reports in a folder to maintain traceability for the batch. To find out more, go to the website shown on the screen.